welcome to another series, which is performing cutover migration from on-premise Exchange Server 2016 to Office 365. And I'm your friend Faisal, and I'm here to demonstrate, slash explain, slash teach, slash show, whatever you can say. Uh, uh, steps and the procedure that will help anyone who wants to perform this project or who wants to just learn that how to perform this cutover migration from on-premise exchange to Office 365 and uh, let's start uh, Something about cutover migration. What's cutover migration? This cutover migration is the migration that you don't want to go through phase of phased approach. You want to do it in one shot. Let's say you have an organization with theoretically they say it's up to two thousand mailboxes or two thousand users. If you have two thousand up to two thousand mailboxes, you can perform cutover migration, but Practically, I would say, if you have an organization like up to 300 users, that would be the right choice. Um, you you don't sync configure AD Connect or ADFS for it in the beginning. What you do in one shot, you create a migration batch, and in one shot, what you do, you migrate all the users' mailboxes slash group definitions slash contacts from your on-premise exchange to Office 365. Once you do that, let's say over the weekend or over the holiday period or after hours, again, bandwidth will play a very major important role here as well as the size of mailboxes. So let's say once you do that, then your client computers uh, their Outlook profile on client computers needs to be reconfigured or let's say a new profile needs to be created to connect to mailbox in Office 365 not to your on-premise exchange server anymore because again it's not a hybrid approach it's not like you can have an on-premise as well as Office 365 cutover migration is a single phase like in one shot in one go you want to move from on-premise exchange to Office 365. So once you move all your mailboxes and once your user account information is synced to Office 365 Azure Active Directory, what you do, you perform certain steps on your on-premise exchange server slash DNS to make sure that when a new profile New Outlook profile is created on client computers. It don't connect to your on-premise exchange. Instead, it should connect to Office 365 mailbox. And of course, later on, if you want to decommission your exchange server, you, you can do it. I don't see any purpose of keeping this other than just record keeping or something like that, because you can't use it for mailboxes anyway. Uh, so this is the idea. Cutover migration. Uh, theoretically, as I say, up to 2,000 users, but can be. Uh, but it, if, again, bandwidth play a very important role, and if you have large number of users, it may take days to to complete. But if you have like, as I say, like 300, 400 users with decent sized mailboxes, you may be able to get away high speed links you will be able to get away uh, let's say over the weekend again there are many x factors or variable but that's what cutover migration is all about you can perform cutover migration from exchange 2003 exchange 2007 exchange 2010 exchange 2013 and even exchange 2016 like what i will do in this example okay just to show you a lot this is my lab topology. I have Microsoft Exchange Server 2016. As you know, Exchange Server 2016 has all mailbox roles default. Just one mailbox role is there, which is mailbox, and all 
roles are merged into a single role. So I have one exchange server with trusted third party certificate installed. Uh, this is a requirement because uh, from Office 365 portal when you create a migration batch you specify the RPC client access point which is basically your Outlook Anywhere URL as well as the credential so you can try to establish a connection to your on-premise exchange server. For me, I have a third party Exchange certificate already installed on my Exchange server. Uh, I have just two URLs, all URLs. My Outlook Anywhere URL is middle.itsense.net. Uh, my o OWA is also the same. All, for all my virtual directories, it's mail.itsense.net, single URL for all. With an exception of, of course, autodiscover, which is autodiscover.itsense.net. I have this domain with GoDaddy. I just I, I purchased this domain. As you know, my domain is itsense.com. But for in order to demonstrate, I needed one domain, so I bought one domain called itsense.net. Uh, of course, I did not bought Office 365 subscription. To what I did, I signed up for evaluation. Once you sign up for evaluation, they give you 25 license. And for up to 30 days, you can evaluate. And during the evaluation, you can test. Uh, and that's what I'm using in the evaluation of Office 365. I don't have any dedicated exchange server in real. So I have one VMware workstation. So one virtual machine with Exchange Server 2016 with third party certificate installed, around four gigs of RAM and two processor. One domain controller slash DNS for Active Directory domain itsense.net. It's two gigs RAM, uh, one processor or two processor doesn't matter. I have one dedicated server again with two gigs of RAM and uh, two processors, and I will use this server to configure Azure AD Connect to configure the password synchronization as well as user slash group synchronization between on-premise uh, on Active Directory to Microsoft Azure Active Directory which is used by Office 365. And I have one client computer running Windows 10 Enterprise Edition and with all of Outlook 2016 and there we use like uh, first I will connect to internal exchange send some messages to generate some data then migrate my mailboxes to office 365 over here and then a new profile i will create a new outlook profile for this outlook client to connect to mailbox which is in office 365 not the mailbox which was used to be on exchange on premise exchange server there are a few changes you need to do, as I said, and I will explain to you during that video. I have covered that. I will cover that in the video. Uh, that what changes you need to make on your on-premise uh, once everything is being cut over. Once you want to do the final cut over, and you want to activate your Office 365 and shut down uh, your on-premise Exchange Server services. So this is a small, uh, very simple lab topology. You can also get away with a computer with 16 gigs of RAM. You can create all this virtual machine, get an Office 365 subscription. You need to register a domain, yeah. And of course, you should have access to the public DNS of that. Like I bought a domain with GoDaddy and I have DNS manager. So you can add appropriate records in it. If you have a home connection, like I have a home internet, which is not a dedicated IP, of course, you can create temporary records just for testing. So you can test your Outlook Anywhere connection. So what I'm trying to say, if there is a will, there is a way. If you really want to learn it in a lab environment, uh, you will figure it out how to set it up. I mean, it's not impossible. A little bit of an effort, but 
its own doing rule. So this is a scenario. Uh, as I say, cutover migration. It's a one-shot migration. Uh, once everything is moved, what you do, you change the mail flow how by changing the rec the uh, DNS records in your public DNS. So instead of pointing your domain MX records to your on-premise exchange server, it will point to Office 365 server. And Office 365 not only require MX record, it requires several other records because, as you know, Office 365 is not just Exchange. It's Exchange Online, it's Sky for Business Online, it's SharePoint Online, it's OneDrive. So all these services require several different types of records, and those records need to be added in your public DNS domain zone so that your client computers can connect to appropriate uh, Office 365 servers for services and they can actively use those services. As well as, of course, when somebody wants to send email to your organization uh, so that the mail can reach to the right destination, which is Office 365, so that you, your users can receive it. So DNS changes are very important. I will show you how to verify a domain against uh, Office, 365, Office 365 because once you add a domain to your Office 365 account, you need to verify to ensure to make sure that uh, and they want to know that to ensure that you are the owner, you have an authority over that domain. Uh, one option is of course to specify the credentials and or second option is to create a text record. I will show you everything step by step and in and last video I will cover AD Connect as well that once I will migrate all my mailboxes slash user accounts to Office 365 I will still keep my Active Directory and what the reason of keeping Active Directory is not just Exchange you have several other applications and slash file servers right and users are active and they are connected to your network and they are using other services. You want to keep the same password for your Active Directory as well as for Office 365. By default, it's not the case. You need to configure Azure AD Connect to perform the password synchronization. So you can keep the same password. So if you change a password in Active Directory, it will be changed to respective account in Office 365. Azure Active Directory as well. So it's a same sign-on, not single sign-on. Although single sign-on configuration is also possible through Active Directory Federation services. But I will configure Azure AD Connect for password sake. I will show you how to perform filtering. Let's say if you want to, you know, uh, uh, sync specific user accounts or specific group which are in particular OU rather than uh, syncing the entire domain accounts. That's also possible. And I will show you that. So in simple, uh, uh, in summary, it's all very simple topology, not very difficult. So we will start off with first adding and verifying the domain, then we will create a migration. Uh, uh, task, uh, migration endpoint, sorry, migration batch, which where you specify migration endpoints, that's one of, that's your, of course, your exchange server with this name, mail.itsense.net, as I say, it needs to be configured with certificate service, you specify credentials, once the connection uh, session is established, Migration batch will start syncing mailboxes, populating your user account representation in Azure Active Directory, as well as are syncing your mailbox data or mailbox content for those for your users to Office 365. Once it's done, you need to assign license to users, and once all set, then you to perform certain tasks on your on-premise exchange and configure user profile 
and you're all set to go and finally if you want password synchronization as well as users account slash group synchronization so that when a new user joins in instead of creating its account active directory as well as an office 365 all you have to do with the help of azure ad connect you just need to create an account in active directory and it will be automatically created in office 365 azure ad uh, with the same password so i will show you all these in each steps so let's start with practical demonstrations thank you